Hello right bags, it's Jade. Welcome to another Things You Need to Know About Torchlight. The first one's doing pretty well and I thought I'd give you some more information about the finer points of Torchlight, including sockets, gems, skills, stats, everything you need to know in terms of leveling up your character and progressing. So help the channel out, make sure you're liking the video guys and come and join my Discord if you're looking for players to maybe join up with. We've got a big Discord full of players and I'm hoping lots of rat bags have got these across the different consoles. I'm playing it on the Switch at the moment so if you've got a Nintendo Switch hit me up. Anywho, let's crack on with more things you need to know about Torchlight including lots of tips. There are four types of difficulty in Torchlight, casual that can play pretty much any age, normal is for players that are new to the genre. Veteran is for players familiar with Torchlight and Elite is the highest level of difficulty. Obviously there is a new game plus mode too but that won't be unlocked until you've completed the game. The right hand side is your map of course and it will open up more as you explore certain areas. You can make your map small, large or get rid of it completely by pressing the right D-pad. You can use map portal scrolls that will take you back to certain areas, particularly the hometown where you can sell items. But you'll also find lots of portals in the game and dungeons that will take you home as well. You will find plenty of quests in and around the world, not just at the central hubs as well. These can often offer you rare and different loot. But sometimes they'll actually offer you a lot less experience than doing some of the main quest lines. So some of these I would probably ignore if you want to just get through some of the bigger story beats first. You can always revisit a lot of these quest givers and go through whatever portal they've opened for you to explore. And you can turn off quests in the menu button so that you can only show one quest at a time if you really wanted to. Pay attention to what the actual dungeon levels are when you go into a dungeon or what enemy types there are in that area. If something is level 15 but you're only level 9, I would suggest you make sure you go and level up a little bit more in an easier section and then come back. I generally stay away from any enemies or dungeons that are at least 3 levels or higher than me. It's definitely doable, then maybe just a little bit more bullet spongy, but I'd rather go and explore a little bit more, find some more quests that give me more experience and items, and then go back to that spot. But what you'll find is you're wasting a lot of time just taking out one simple mob, and that's only at the start of a dungeon before getting into it, and it becomes really super hard, and you've got to send for more potions or quit the dungeon halfway through. If you play a multiplayer, just like a lot of other games, the difficulty will ramp up. You won't necessarily get separate loot scaling or separate enemy scaling for your character. If you're in an area with three or four players, then you can expect to see more enemies and they'll be harder to kill. But you don't have to worry about sharing your loot. Each player sees different style of loot and it's only yours to keep. Just be careful if you are playing multiplayer, you still need to be close to your teammates to share experience. If you are doing different quests and you're going miles away from each other, you don't share experience. There are three skill trees you need to know about. Each tree skill has 10 skills, 7 that are activated and 3 that are passive. Skills become available every 7 levels. The active skills are available at 1, 7, 14, 21, 28, 35 and 42. Passive skills being available at 1, 7 and 14. Skill trees allow players to further specialise their characters beyond the class division. To level up your skills you're going to need to get your XP bar up and when you do this you normally rewarded 1 skill point but you can get more skill points by increasing your fame. Your fame points pretty much activate when you kill bosses or complete quests. So you'll find quite a lot of the time when you level up you may have 3 or 4 points to use instead of just 1. When you use a skill point it unlocks that skill and then you can add more in that skill to make that one particular skill stronger. You can increase it by up to 15 times strength but some of the higher levels do require your character to be higher level too. You also get a tier bonus every 5 ranks. So if you level up your magma ability all the way up to level 5, you'll unlock a special tier bonus. You can get up to 100 skill points from leveling and additional 32 fame level points for 132. But don't worry, if you ever make a mistake with your skills, you can respec. However, it works a bit differently, it won't be reset all the way to 0, just resets the last 3 skill points you've spent. So if you want to try something out but maybe not too happy with it, before activating any more upgrades, make sure you respec. You can do this for gold in hub towns. Now let's take a look at armor and loot. In Torchlight 2 there are 6 different qualities of loot, armor and weapons. Common being pretty much bog standard items which offer no enchantments. Green does mean they're enchanted so they have additional magic abilities. Rare equals blue. 
These could have random enchantments, but sometimes you'll find that these are part of unique item sets. Gold and orange is unique. These have the same fixed name, and they often have the same enchantments that are fixed. Again, you can get these in certain sets by completing quests and missions, and some of the items only certain classes can use. Legendary, which is orange and red. This is the highest tier of equipment. These are the most rarest items. They'll offer the best enchantments and properties, and they only apply to weapons or shields. If you find a purple item, that will be your quest item. Anything like keys or special scrolls or items you need to return to NPCs, they should all be purple. You can equip up to seven different armor slots, boots, chest armor, gloves, helmets, leggings, shoulders and shields. Alongside that, you've got three additional accessory slots, belts, necklaces and rings. It's worth noting that you often get a little bonus for having all the same armor sets equipped. Some of these are pretty rare, unique, but you'll also find really common or bog standard items like rawhide and leather armor sets. Your pets can also be equipped with different types of armor too, including collars and tags. These give bonuses to attack damage or their health. One feature you should definitely take advantage of is sending your pets back to town, particularly if you're in a dark dungeon that's really hard. If you're running out health potions or mana potions, you can actually make a shopping list. You do this in the inventory menu and it will basically send the pet, sell any items it's got in its inventory and return with some potions or whatever it is that you want. Just click on the radial dial in the top left corner the scroll with the tick mark and just basically choose what potion you want it to go and buy from the store. The bottom left marker is what you want your status of your pet to be, either attacking, defensive or passive. I normally have it on attacking, but you do risk your pet running away. If it takes too much damage, it will literally just bugger off and leave you facing the minions. This isn't a big deal early on, but later on in the game you may find your pet just running off completely and it's that crucial moment you need to help out or start using it, some of its potions. And don't forget your pet can hold a bunch of items, up to 100 I do believe, just like you can, so make sure you fill up its inventory if you start becoming full. The way I play Torchlight, I generally grab most of my loot, complete whatever quest I'm on, and then put everything that I find in, in my pet. And then I'll go and sort it all out once I get to a hub town. Also use fishes a lot. You can gather fish pretty much all over the map and at the hub town. These are just a really quick way to buff your pets a little bit. I'll fish at least 10 times so I've got enough to keep my pet going while we're doing the quest. Just give it that additional boost. Some fish is definitely much more valuable than others, but definitely, definitely start using them. Don't let them all just build up that you're wasting them away. If you've ever played ESO, then you'll probably be familiar with gems, but there's some big changes between Torchlight 1 and Torchlight 2. In the first game, you were able to collect a lot of them and then transmute them and get a higher powered gem. But in Torchlight number two, you can actually get three gems that you can transmute and they'll give you something of equal value, but a more rare gem of the same level. Gems are buffs and debuffs that you can equip or give you extra elemental abilities. You can equip these to a whole host of things, including armor and weapons, and there are ways to make them stronger or can transmute them into different types of gems. You'll place these into the sockets and the maximum amount of sockets that any one item can have is six. There are ways to upgrade certain items, so if you really don't want to give up a certain piece of armor, you can find people to upgrade the slots so you can make it more powerful. But a gem can only be put into the item that's equal to it or higher. So if there is some sort of shotgun you really love and it's level 10, but you've got a bunch of level 20 gems, you're gonna to have to make that shotgun level 20, which you can do. If you make a mistake or you want to mix up your slots, you can remove gems for a cost at usually some of the hub towns. There are 11 main gem or socket ball items in the game. Flame, Ice, Spark, Venom, Chaos, Iron Ember, Void Ember, Blood Ember, and then you have something called Eyes, which yes, is an eye. Added to that, you can get skull items that you can slot in. And on top of that one, there are a few special items like Lucky Die, which increases your chance of magic finding luck, or Lucky Coin, which gives you more gold. Don't worry too much about hoarding gems, go ahead and use them in slots for your weapons. Later on you will start getting a lot more of them. And some of the merchants that you need you won't actually unlock until you get to the second hub town. 
You can see here there's two dwarves. One of these will take away the gems from items. So if you want to save that gem and put it into something else, you can do that for a cost of gold. And the other dwarf actually does it the other way around. He'll destroy the gem, but save the armor or weapon piece. Now let's talk about spells. So maybe you played the game and you didn't choose the Ember Mage, but you still want to do a lot of magic. Well, you can find spells in the world. Once these are learned, you can use by any player, any class. Your pets can also have spells, and they can hold up to four spells to use. I mentioned town portal scrolls earlier, they will teleport you back to town. But the other scroll you'll find is identify scrolls. You'll often come across items that have question marks on them, which basically mean you can't use them until you use identify scroll. Enchantment can be a big part of Torchlight 2. You can add more abilities and buffs to your weapons and armor. You'll normally find one in every hub town, but you can also find them in and around the world that can actually do much more powerful enchanting. If you do come across a random enchanter, don't assume they'll always be there. Once you've spoken to them, you'll only have a short window to do it before they start to disappear. So definitely worth keeping some of your items when you're going traveling in case you do want to get it buffed by someone that you meet. There is a limit to how many enchantments you can do on each item. And of course, depending on how much gold you've got, you may or may not be able to afford it. It's definitely something to bear in mind as you're traveling around. Now let's talk about weapons. There are 13 different types of weapons, seven melee and six ranged. Typical things like axes, great weapons, maces, pole arms, staves and swords, but you can also get gauntlet fist weapons. Alongside that, the ranged weapons consist of bows, cannons, crossbows, shotguns, pistols and wands. Elemental attacks take up a big part of your character build. And if you've ever played other games, you're pretty much familiar with how it all works. But just in case, fire damage is going to cause a burning effect, which will ignore armor. Poisons often make the enemy cause less damage towards you, and it means they'll also take more damage. Ice damage will freeze your opponent or slow him down at least, and stop him also casting spells on you too. Lightning damage causes the mob to actually emit shock bolts that can affect other enemies nearby. Now let's take a quick glance at the stats. Strength, Dexterity, Focus and Vitality. On the Nintendo Switch version, there is a little bit of a glitch. I don't know if this is the same for Xbox and PlayStation, but at the moment, the UI isn't matching what the actual symbol is. The strength is the top one, it is the sword, but you can see in the description, it says dexterity. You have to toggle on and off a couple times, covering over them before hopefully it fixes it. This did cause me a few problems in my live stream today where it was saying the wrong attributes for the wrong stat. So just be aware, hopefully this will be patched soon. Otherwise, the top one's strength, the next one's dexterity, the third one, which is the eye, is your focus, and the fourth one, the shield with the cross, is your vitality. Ignore what the writing says on the right-hand side and just go by that when you're thinking about what stats you want to improve. So your strength is going to give you more physical and elemental weapon damage for all of your weapons. So even if you're a battle mage or you're an outlander, you may still want to put a little bit into strength just to increase your elemental weapon damage that you're doing. You can also get increases to critical strike damage, basically making the strength stat one of the most important if you're someone that just really wants to go and attack the enemies as quickly as possible. Dexterity increases that critical strike chance by up to 50% more. You can get items and skills that further boost it to 100%. You'd also get dodge chance more as well. You can level up to 50% extra dodge chance and you can also find items that will give you up to 75% dodge chance. Next, there'll be also increases something called fumble recovery, which reduces the damage penalty for fumbled attacks. Focus is your mana. It's going to increase the maximum amount of mana pool you have, increases all your, de increases all your elemental damage, but not just your items and weapons, increasing your focus also increases your damage output on all your skills. You also get something called execute with focus. When holding two weapons that are the same, you've got a chance to attack simultaneously to give a bonus boost of 100% damage. Vitality is your health. If you're looking to go all out tank, you may want to increase this a lot. It increases your armor and increases your block chance, but only when using shields up to 50%. Again, you can increase that by up to 75% with items and potions. 
Unfortunately, there's no way to respec your character for the stats. While you can respec your last three skill points you used, stats stay there permanently. This is what makes this very different from Diablo 3, and this is one of the reasons a lot of people prefer Torchlight. It may not be for everyone, but some people really like the way that you have to choose and think carefully about your characters a bit more. Transmuting makes a return from the first game and is slightly different from Enchanting. Enchanting will often give you a weapon Enchanting directly impacts whatever item or piece of armor you've got, whereas Transmuting takes items that are the same level and makes them into better, stronger versions. You can do this for a whole host of different potions and some socketable items. So if you find you've got three normal health potions, you can combine it into one big health potion. Likewise, the same for mana and any spells that you find. The difference being that when you combine two spell scrolls, you'll get a random spell based on the average level of the two spells. But again, don't worry too much starting out. You can't transmute any items until you get the beginning of Act 2, where you go to Zephyresh, the second city. I want to go much more in detail about transmuting and how to socket gems a little bit later in separate videos. But for now, I thought I'd just better give you the heads up. Alongside the elemental effects I spoke about, you've got status effects too. And these can be done on you as well as against enemies. I've gone through freeze, poison, shock and burn. But delving deeper into that, you've got some that do damage over time. Bleed is something that you can increase by focusing on your focus stat. Blindness causes enemies to not aggro on you as much. When it's cast on you, you'll have basically a black spear all around and you won't be able to see very far. Draw pulls the enemies closer to you. Flee causes enemies to run away. Immobilize prevents the enemy from moving or turning. Knockback pushes the target directly away. Stun prevents the target from moving or acting. And slow stops the movement either completely, the attack speed or the cast speed. I don't want to go too much deeper into it, but again, I just want to list that up. I do want to get some proper gameplay on the Switch rather than just using PC. So I'm going to leave that and show you all the elements again and show you how to combine it with certain weapons, certain spells to get the most out of elemental damage. And that is pretty much it. Everything you need to know about Torchlight, going through explaining all what you need to know about sockets, armors, skills, stats, the whole lot. I hope that's been helpful. Don't forget to go and check out the first guide where I spoke more about the characters and stay tuned for even more tutorials and guides about Torchlight 2. I'm really enjoying this. For a long time now I've been playing games that I've kind of just been running along with but Torchlight 2 is something I'm really really enjoying so expect to see a lot more content. Don't forget to subscribe, make sure you're liking and I'll see you ratbags later.